morning, class. As you all remember, yesterday, if you forgot, my name is Martin Fox. It's on the board there. We're here for op uh, precision optical alignment, uh, one phase. Today, we're going to be doing verticalizing the spindle of an instrument. Uh, first things first, set up our tripod, which I've already done. You can tell that the tripod here for a jig transit is a lot more staunch, a lot more stable. Uh, it's more precision than a builder's level transit or a uh, uh, uh for the reason that the jig transit shoots thousandths of an inch versus eighths or sixteenths of an inch. Uh, first things first, set up the tripod and level it, which I've already done. I've got a 98 here, which is a precision level. You can use a torpedo level just to get the instrument close both ways so that you don't have to fight adjusting the main instrument once it's on the tripod. Okay, uh, tripod's either going to be on the legs or in the, the transit case, nowhere else, not sitting on a table because it is a precision piece of equipment. A used one usually costs around $10,000, so you want to be real careful with it. started. They are brass. The threads are brass. You don't want to strip them. The instrument is quite heavy. It's a lot easier with two people doing it just to be on the safe side. Okay, I know I'm caught. Lift up before I let my hands off that it is attached to the instrument. Now what I'm going to do is the four adjusting legs I have loose. You want them loose when they're in the box so there's no tension on the base plate. Uh, I'm going to snug them up and I'm going to rough level the instrument with a bullseye bubble just like most instruments have to level them. And that's just to get it close. Okay. Both directions. And again, just finger pressure on these. You don't want to crank them too tight and warp the base plate. If you warp this base plate down here, you'll have to send the instrument in to get recalibrated because it's it's bent. So okay, now that we have it rough leveled in both directions, we will verticalize it. What do I mean by verticalize? What you're doing is taking a little bit of, of adjustment with your legs and a little bit of adjustment with the tangent screw for this coincidence vial. So I'm going to just clamp it up in the vertical position here. Here's a little gun turret I call it. There's a mirror. It sh shines down into this Vial. Again, when we get out into the shop, uh, everybody will get a chance to do this. It'll take a little bit of time. Don't be frustrated. Some, some instruments will come fast. Some, some take a little bit. So when I'm looking down through this coincidence vial or bubble, what you will see is a line. And just like a bubble on a level, there'll be two of them. But they'll be split. And it's called a split level vial or a coincidence vial. What you have to do is to adjust that skull so that these lines or fish hooks, I, some people call them, line up. Then you're in coincidence or level. So first things first, we rough leveled it. We'll have it in one position like, like I have it right here. Now I'm going to adjust the scope so it's level. Okay, now the coincidence levels, they line up. Then what you're going to do is turn it 180 degrees and not really burning it, just turn it. And you always want to turn it in one direction. Some people like it this way, some people like it that way. But whichever way you start turning it during the day, that's the way you want to turn it all day. Uh, Yes. Oh, the reason for that is because you could build up a small uh, grease wedge in this bearing plate here and cause it to be off just a little bit. It shouldn't because it's a precision equipment, but it's good habit to always turn it one way. That's why usually everybody adjusts it a little different. They'll have one person do all the shots on a job uh, just to make sure that, that they're consistent in the way they're reading it. 
Okay, so now again, this little window will turn so I can stand in one spot and do everything from one spot. Okay, it's off a little bit. So now to get it verticalized, I'll turn half of the distance with my level screws, okay, and half of the distance with the tangent screw, which tips the scope up and down to get them in line. What I mean by that, and like I say, again, when we get out to the shop, we'll all be doing this. If that's your split bubble and they're like this, you want to move it half the distance. So now, if this was your starting point, you're going to move it to here with your lower legs, your adjustment legs, and then move the final adjustment with your tangent screw. What you're doing is whittling away at the imperfections in the axle and tweaking it so that this base comes in uh, coincidence with this axle shaft. Okay, once you do that, again, 180 degrees, check it. Same thing, half and half. And you'll keep doing that until when you turn it 180 degrees that those fish hooks or coincidence bubbles stay lined up. Then you're going to turn it 90 degrees, do the same thing, check it. Usually you'll get three legs, the fourth leg might be off just a hair. But same thing, line it up, 180 from that position, check it, keep doing that until that's in, then turn it back to your original orientation and see if it stayed on. If not, you'll have to keep playing with it until three of the legs stay in coincidence. That means that your spindle is now verticalized. Reason, any questions why we verticalize a spindle? Very good question. One of the reasons is so that when you're shooting down, so now, now that this is, I can turn this up and down and just put this on, and I know I'm gonna be level and in, in horizontal and vertical plane. I can plunge down on a line on the floor and I can transfer that line up on a column and I know that I'm going to be right on. I'm going to be not beneath of an inch off, I'm going to be right on. If this instrument was off a little bit, just like a builder's level or something, you might be able to shoot down here and by the time you get up there, depending on the foot, rise over run again, you could be off thousandths of an inch, which in machinery setting we don't want that. That is the reason. That's a good question why we do that. Okay, there I just goofed up and I turned it the wrong way. So, there we go. Keep turning it the right way. Uh, that's the reason that we verticalize, so that we can plunge on a line, we can dump through, check a line over there, and everything's going to be in line. Any more questions? No? Good. Okay, tomorrow when we are in class, we will be out in the shop setting it up, having you, you people setting it up right from scratch, leveling it, everything, and get used to it. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow.